Welcome, everybody from all over the place. So I don't know what time zones you're all in at the moment. But uh, it's afternoon here. Hey, Bev. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Kelly. BC. Nice paintings, uh, Daryl. And we get Eva in here. We'll get started. Shad, nice to see you. By the way, you guys are all on mute. Feel free to unmute so that you can talk to me. It's going to be a conversation today, obviously. Good to uh, see you too, Scott. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Eva, welcome from across the pond. It's a little late there, but all right, we're going to jump right in. And this is literally a free for all hands off from me, anything you want to ask. And uh, I'll, I'll warn you, I've already gotten a bunch of questions that people have posed to me. Uh, so I'm going to do these in, I'll do it like American Idol, in no particular order. Uh, uh, but I want to do one little caveat. Shad, great questions that you sent me. But because we've got people in here, pick one that you want to make sure that I get to of what you sent. And then if we have time, if we have time, we'll go to the others. It, yeah, it really doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, it's yeah. you know, I throw it up to you. That, um, that, well, I'm going to go with, I'm going to, I'm going to actually start with Eva. I want you to think about what's important to you and then everybody else can jump in uh, after that. All right, Eva, uh, you, you had a very general question. Talk to me. Hello and hello, lovely people <laughs> that I haven't seen for ages. <laughs> hello, uh, Daryl Bev. Um, yes, it's to do with platform readings. Yeah. So I'm interested in doing some platform readings. Um, as a sort of well, not theatrical show, but obviously it's got to be entertaining as well. So my question is about platform readings, please. Okay, so I call them gallery readings. Okay. We, can call, we can call them platform readings. Uh, and you've got, in my opinion, a variety of different ways to do this. Th three primary ways to do it. And I'll just tell you the way I do it and have done it. Uh, I've, I've done quote, platform readings. I've done group readings. Let's just call it that. Uh, I've done group readings in the middle of an airport when an airplane has been delayed and we have people literally just sitting around and uh, I've done it in the middle of a freaking airport with a bunch of people. I've done it formally at the castle. Uh, I have obviously done it formally on stage and I've done it here on Zoom. Uh, you may remember, Eva, that... Um, one of quickly doing a quick glance here. One one of my favorite people uh, is Eugenia Dennis, Jean Dennis, uh, the first radio female radio psychic in the United States. And uh, I won't go into all her background, but I, I I love what she did, and she took the classic Q and A setting. And she took the cue out of it. I just want you to think about that for a minute. She took the classic question and answer setting and took the questions out. And what that meant was that there was no, uh, there was no attempt by her to figure out what the person was asking. They literally would show up in an audience. She would get an inclination, pick on somebody, her assistant would go up. Now, they didn't have the microphones and audio systems we have now. They would tell her, tell the assistant the question. The question would then be read to her or thrown to her by voice. Up on stage, she'd answer it. And Jean Dennis, brilliant that she was, uh, made a big deal of saying, I am not a prophet. I am not a fortune teller. I just happen to know the future. It was just brilliant, right? <laughs> I just happen to know the future. And so she was publicized as that. And the way I have done this, Eva, is I generally have people, when they come in, they get an index card or they have a piece of paper, however that works, uh, if they're at home, and I have them write down a question. So I do the typical Q&A thing, write down your question. I don't want to see it. Now, I used to, I want to give you a little caveat here. I used to do a no questions asked question and answer. So people would come in, they'd write down their question, they'd think about it, I'd give them an answer. 
And I think you, Eva, you've heard me say, I stopped doing that because of what happened to me in London at Treadwells. Uh, I was doing the whole book signing thing there and we were doing gallery readings. And I had a gentleman stand up and ask a question in his head. And thankfully, I don't remember many readings, this one I do. Uh, thankfully, I told him there were other people involved, and I, I won't get into all the details of the answer I gave him, but basically said, you need to reach out to some other people who can give you better direction and input. And after we were done, he came up and he and I were chatting. I said, do you mind me asking what your question was? Because I never had people disclose the question. It was just, I give them the answer. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And, you know, people were entertained. They became basically psych psychic uh, voyeurs is what they were. They were, they were peeping Tom, Toms and Thomasinas. Uh, and he said, yes, I asked you in my head, am I doomed? He had just been diagnosed with cancer. Now, can you imagine, just take a moment. I didn't, but can you imagine a different answer coming from me? And I take what I do very uh, seriously and I take my responsibility to heart. And that was the last time I did a no questions asked Q and A. So now is everybody writes down a question and I will do what you've seen many times on TV from people. I get a feeling over here and I'll go to them and they ask me the question. It's literally uh, now I will sometimes have them do it in their head and answer it. I'm getting a feeling about this, 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 and this, and then have them read the question, but I do not let anybody get away with no, not telling me the question. Uh, I like it better that way, Eva. So for example, if I were sitting here and I would say, Daryl, I've got this, you know, I, I'm drawn to you for whatever reason, you need to hear this, boom, you know, do you have a question you want to ask? And then I give an answer. That's, it, it's a very intuitive choice of the, the seeker, the, the person, the querent being read. Um, I can tell you that there's an audience management component to this, depending on the, the amount of time that you have. And that's because once I start telling Daryl all these things, I can, whether Daryl says it out loud or not, he's going to have more questions because, you know, here we are, and maybe I give everybody five minutes of time. Boom, Daryl, here's yours, here's yours. If, if I ask the question, is there anything else you want to know, you know, and you and I both know there are more questions he's going to want to know. So I start with everybody's going to get five minutes. It's a, not in any particular order. It's where I'm drawn to intuitively. And then I am sometimes, uh, and again, many of you have heard me say this, I've been doing tarot and obviously I created the deck of shadows and the Vitruvian square. This stuff all goes around in my head. I don't need props. And so very much when I'm doing gallery readings, I'm just talking to people. I've got numbers going off in my head. I've got images going off in my head and the tarot, the deck of shadows, the Vitruvian square became become a conduit for me. And I'm talking to them. It looks, so again, now let's talk about staging. It gives the appearance of a psychic reading. And I do not use the word psychic because I hate the freaking connotations with it. Um, but it comes off as, it comes off as a John Edwards style approach without me talking to dead people because I don't pretend to be a medium. Uh, doesn't mean I don't talk to dead people, um, particularly in light of something that happened a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that's just as an aside here, for those of you that, that do believe or don't believe, I was actually told that a conversation, I will swear to you today, took place. I was told it could never have taken place because the person had died. And I said, that's not possible. I have an absolute distinct memory of sitting down, talking to this person on a couch, as clear as we're doing this right now. And somebody told me, Scott, it's literally physically impossible. The person had died four years before that. So whatever. Um, but I don't make that part of the reading. Uh, so there's the staging part of it. And then the reason I have everybody write down a question, and we don't have time to go into it today. Uh, I don't get to everybody in a gallery reading, depending, of course, on the audience size. 
you know, here it'd be very easy. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six people. I could get to all of you in a half hour if I did five minute readings each. And that's setting aside the disclaimer at the beginning and things. So, you know, 30, 40 minutes with more people, you can't get to everybody or you're not going to be drawn to everybody. And so I have a guided visualization that I do at the end where I actually, uh, and it's something I've developed over years and years and years of doing this, I can guarantee everybody that shows up at one of my events will get a reading. It may not be the five minute one, but I guarantee you're going to get a reading and you're going to get an answer. And so what I do at the end is I take everybody through a guided visualization. BC, I don't know if you were at one of my seminars at the castle when I did this. I had everybody write down questions and at the end had them close their eyes and then had them meet their inner guide. And we kind of yeah. did answers that way. Yeah. And I end every single platform reading that way, Eva. Doesn't mean you have to, but everybody that comes is guaranteed uh, an answer in one way or another. Now, that's very general. Does that, an, does that kind of give you a feel for the staging of it? Because there, there are a couple other ways to do it, but that's how yeah. I do it. No, that, that's a helpful, helpful start. That, that gives me something to work on. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I will also say you, I might as well give you credit for this. Uh, we were chatting the other day and I was telling my wife, Carolyn, uh, about some of the things that you and I have been chatting about. And she got actually really excited about the supper thing. I won't go into any more detail because it's, it's your thing, but you and I are going to have a conversation because it's like, um, it, it's a really cute idea, but there's a perfect, there's a perfect opportunity to have your event. You can host it or be a presenter at it. Uh, and literally everybody shows up and it's very immersive because they're writing stuff down. It becomes very tactile. Uh, and you're not, you're not running the risk of someone saying, am I doomed? Because they got to read the, the question now. Um, I also, by the way, tell people I do not read for other people. So if you're coming and asking a question about yourself, I'm good with that. But don't ask me a question about somebody else. And you're just curious. That's not how I work. So I do draw, I, I do draw some boundaries with what I'm reading. Uh, and I tell people I prefer not to answer questions, obviously, legal, financial, or health issues. And most people ignore me when I say that. So it's, they, they ask the, they, you know, they're going to ask their questions anyway. And then it becomes uh, just your way of artfully responding to them. Uh, I, I will also tell you a lot of times, actually a, a great deal of the time, my answers have nothing to do with the question they asked. And I think that's probably true of most of you who do readings anyway. People will show up and they'll say, I, you know, this is what's on my mind. And yet the cards or the oracles or the runes or the astrology signs, whatever it is you're reading, it's something entirely different. It's what they need to hear, but it's not what they came asking for. So th th there's a whole preamble that I also do when I'm doing a group. Um, again, kind of beyond the scope of this, but it, th there's a whole preframe that's part of, of what I do. Any, anything you want to follow up with? No, that's, that's help. Very helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're that, that will keep me quiet for a minute. I can't keep the timer is on. All right, Shad, you got one of your questions? Yeah. Well, you know, like, I, as I said, I've got a lot of time on my hand to be thinking about things. I'm still waiting, you know, my life's in limbo. So you know, forgive the fact that I, I wrote you that missive. Uh, it's all right. I loved it. It was just, it's like, I'm not sure we'll have a time for all of it, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, if I had to, you know, I was just looking at my notes a little bit and I was thinking maybe if we could just kind of talk about the different types in general terms of, uh, of readings, you know, you've got, uh, you know, divinatory readings, you've got personality readings, uh, I can't think of the others off the top of my head now, but you know, general readings which kind of devolve into a, a I lost your sound, buddy. Have I got it now? Got you now. Yeah, I I'm having some issues, I think. Anyway, um 
if we could just, you know, if you could talk about that, or if we could just chat about the different types of uh, of, of uh, readings. We, we can, and, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm not ignoring you, what I'm looking up real quick, because you, you bring up a, a question, if I can find it here. Uh, I had posted, I, I created a bunch of cheat sheets that will be, that will be coming out that, that people can do. And one of the things in it, Chad, is what I call my divination framework. And I know you're talking about different types of readings. To me, that's process. That's the, the logistics of the reading. And I'm going to invite you to look at it a little bit differently. There are four reasons in my mind that people come for a reading or four things that they get out of a reading. One, they're coming for entertainment. Great deal of, you know, even gallery readings, a vast majority of people I've told you, you know, that the doubting, the, the doubting Thomases who turn into the peeping Toms, you know, it's, it's, uh, and one of my favorite things is I had a lady come to me. Uh, it's actually a group of people, but lady said, can you do tarot and, and your Oracle cards for me? And I said, yes. And her husband kind of prowled behind her, literally prowled walking behind her as we're sitting there. And he said, in the middle of this, I don't want you to do anything like that for me. I don't believe in that. And I was like, okay. Cause I hadn't planned on reading for him anyway. It wasn't part of the whole thing. And at the very end of it, he said, okay, now can you read my palm? As he's drawn a distinction and it turned out he was an alderman in his church. And so there became this very religious morality, you know, like leave no witch unturned thing. And it's, it's, but he was interested. He wanted to be entertained. And I read his palm, um, which to him, you know, to me, it's all the same thing to him, clear distinction. So you've got entertainment, number one. Number two, they're coming for insight. This is where it crosses the line, starts to cross the line into life coaching as well or consulting. But uh, I think of this as they know there's something missing in their lives. They don't know quite what it is. And maybe you can help them figure that out. The third category is prediction. This is where I joke and I say I'm a walking fortune cookie. Right? People, I guarantee, as skeptical as anybody might be, there isn't one person who won't glance at their astrology column in the newspaper or online if, if they know it's there, right? They, some, they may not go look for it, but if it's there, I can guarantee you they're going to look at it. Why? Let's just, let's look at it and see if anything sticks. So entertainment, insight, prediction. And then the last and this is where I, I like to live, is transformation. So I want you to think of four different kinds of readings in those terms. And it's the value that you as a reader, professional or otherwise, bring to the table, no pun intended, right? You're either going to be entertaining and or insightful and or predictive and or transformative. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you were all four and you lived right in the middle? It's a different way to look at it. It won't change, by the way, whether it's a one-card reading, a two-card reading, a three-card reading, a nine-card reading, if you're doing the Vitruvian square or my 21, you know, the three-seven spread. It won't change anything, but it will, it will change the story that you tell as part of the reading. And I, I, I think maybe that gets it a little closer to where you were asking, does it? I think so. Yeah. I mean, you can take, so for example, uh, some of you have been part of the, uh, the, the fortune teller weekend thing that I do, the critique thing. And I've had people that have been on that who have done personality tests. I had somebody come on again, one of my babies, the cube, right? There's a cube in the desert. There's a horse in the desert. There's a ladder. There's a storm. There's flowers, all that stuff. Um, and that, that particular personality test, we'll call it, is very near and dear to my heart because I happen to be friends with Annie Gottlieb. Annie wrote the book, The Cube. 
And Annie knows that I've modified it. And she's given me permission at some point to rewrite the book and add some new components to it. And suddenly one of the people that sh that's in the group shows up and he starts doing the cube as a reading. So it can be as simple as that. You go through, you know, you can do the looser color test. Here are all the colors, pick one of the colors. The way you deliver your message is going to be driven by one of those four categories. Even if it's a personality test, even if it's a color test, even if it's numerology and you're just rolling RPG dice, doesn't matter. It's still figure out what you want the reading to be. I like for all four, but if I have to revert to one, it's transformative. Does that help? Is that where you were going with the question or would, would, were you going yeah, somewhere I, else? Well, like I say, I'm, I'm just trying to figure a lot of this out in my head right now. I mean, you know, I can do a tree reading, you know, the, okay. the tree drawing. Yeah. And those are great. I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of them because when I was teaching, I would have my students at the beginning of the semester, you know, draw a tree. Draw a tree. On the back of them. And, and, you know, then when I'd meet with them, I'd tell them about them and, and, but again, it it's wait wait predictive. wait. Did you did you ever did you did you ever do the draw pig? The draw pit. Pig P I G. Oh pig. No, I haven't done that. Oh, I know about that one. I never okay. had, I've never done that one. So um, but, so both of those are as you call it predictive. Well, I, I see it less predictive as as just personality reading, telling them about themselves. But they can be predictive if you know if if you see that they are. Um, you know, the, well, the example I gave, you know, if, if somebody spends a lot of money, you know, say you're doing a palm reading and, uh, you know, their, their thumb's really loose and, you know, so they're spent, they spend a lot of money. Does that mean they're going to spend money in the future? Probably because that's just human nature, I think. Um, but really, to me, a palm reading is more just telling them about themselves. It's less about what's going to happen maybe a little bit about what happened in the in the past or maybe a lot about what happened in the past but it's really you know what's happening now or how you are what you are and i i'm not i'm just not sure how predictive all right i'm going to i'm going to invite i'm going to give you some homework i wasn't planning on doing homework but it's me it's me i'm going to give you some homework and that's to, to when we're done here i want you to think about what you just said to me and, and that is when you read a poem, it's basically an analysis of who someone is right now, perhaps the past. And I'm going to invite you to, to kind of your head. And I'm telling you a really good palmist can read the future in your palm. It's not as constrictive. None of these are as constrictive. I, I will tell you, you know, I can do a tree reading. And most of the time I'm reading the way they draw, how much time they take to draw rather than what they draw. And it's all built upon how you do anything is how you do everything. And so it becomes the ability to project. You, you use the word predictive. For me, it's projective. That's probably better. And uh, I've said this before. You've heard me say this. If you can read fortune, if you can read tarot cards, you can read light bulbs. And I, I'm really serious about that um, because to me, these are all tools for your own intuition, unless you're sticking with little white book definitions. Uh, you know, it was funny listening to you talk about palmistry because I do palmistry and I don't read that way. It, it, I'm listening to you. Uh, it's, it's very projective. It's very uh, forward looking. Eva, you do a lot of palmistry professionally. How do you, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, is yours all about where they are now in the past, or do you do a lot of forward looking stuff as well? Um, I, I do a mixture. I do like to uh, read their tea leaves first and then read their palms. I like the combination, it suits me. That's fine. Um, be, because I, I, I see the I see the future, their future and their wishes and dreams a lot more in the leaves. Um, and I do use their hands a lot for a personality analysis, but you can see the future as well because it's 
you know, the fate line and everything. So it's a, it's yeah. a blend. So thank you. And so Shad, what I'm suggesting to you is when I do a reading, it's both hands, right? What you're born with, what you do with what you're born with, which becomes the future part of it. So it's a combination of both. Um, very interesting, by the way, your, your interpretation of thumbs, because to me, those are the little fingers, but that it doesn't matter what we use. You know, I'm sitting there having people shake their hands and put their hands up and I'm looking at spaces. You know, are they worried about money if, if these two fingers are too tight together? Um, you know, what, I'm looking for things like that. I'm looking for things on the tips of their fingers, the, the mounds, um, and then moving that forward intuitively. So I, I really, one of the things I'd love for you to do is to take everything you know about fortune telling, I just call it that, take everything you know about fortune telling and ask yourself, what if it didn't have these boundaries on it? What if it really could be everything? And I think you may have a big aha moment. Yeah. You know, yeah sometimes, well, sometimes I just wonder, you know, if, if I'm, I, I think I limit myself or, or um, I'm not so great with seeing the big picture sometimes. And, and so, you know, this is, this will be an opportunity for me to, to try and look at the landscape instead of just, you know, the, the one frame. Well, I, I'm going to ask you not to even look at the landscape because that's going to be constrained by the rules or as Eva said, throw away the rule book. I'm inviting all of you to sit back and say, wouldn't it be nice if, and then you tell me what you want fortune telling to be, because it can be that. You tell me what you want it to be. You know, I mean, one of my big things is, Anybody can pick up a little white book and read the, the, the definitions of a card. But you're not going to get authenticity, accuracy, and timing precision that way. That means digging deeper and looking at stuff. That means throwing out all the rules and, and, and deeply saying, what if I really could tell the future? What would I want that reading to contain? It's an interesting, it's a different approach. And this is now making the tools work the way you want to work, rather than you forcing yourself to work the way you've been told these are supposed to work. Because it's not that way. And I see Daryl smiling because I know he works that way. He's very intuitive and he comes up with all these, these, these modifications and or innovations. Um, and he never would do that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Daryl, but you never would do that if you followed the rules. No, you're right. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I, I don't know how to follow the rules, though. So it's kind of like a handicap that works to my advantage in that way. Well, and, and again, I learned this approach, Shad, because my first deck of tarot cards turned out to be Tarot de Marseille. I didn't know that's what it was back then. I just saw cards with a little white book in a language I couldn't read. And I fell in love with the images. So there were no rules to follow. I wound up becoming one with these cards and these images before anyone said, well, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. Um, and I've had, I've had a lot of purists frown on what I do. And I'm okay with that. It's like, you don't have to be constrained by any of this. It's a very well, I, freeing. You know, I, I think what I'm, what, what I'm trying to express poorly is that I'm not sure if we can predict the future. I don't think the future is written in stone. And I, I think we can give warnings. I hate to say warning, because it's like, that's something bad maybe. But we, we, can, we can project what may happen, but I worry about, uh, you know, is it a self-fulfilling pro prophecy at that point? You know, if we tell, and obviously- yeah, I understand I what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And, and to get into the, the morality of this, the ethics of it, because I'm a big believer in that. And I talk a lot about it uh, when I'm doing training. Number one, I'll tell everybody, particularly if they call me on the radio and I can't see them. It's like, how dare you call a complete stranger and ask them that question? Why would you do that? Because the future is not fixed and you do have control. The idea is to take the cards and design outcomes that you want that are powerful and profound for you. 
And so there's a lot of, in my opinion, ethical nudging that can go on to get them to, we'll just call it behave better, to behave more productively, to behave more powerfully, to behave more positively. They don't have to know you're doing it. Um, you know, I edit some of my readings. If, if I get some of the sword cards and then I, it's followed by the tower and then, you know, you've got all these things going on. It, it, it's kind of like the old palm reading joke. Take someone's palm and you say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you're, you're going to suffer a great loss of wealth and you're going to have some very bad uh, health issues. And oh my goodness, the, the losses that are there. But the good news is you're going to live a long time. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, I would never do that. Even if it's what happened to be in the cards. So mm -hmm. um, that's my chosen path in doing these. I take the approach again, entertainment. You know, are you giving a prediction? Are you transforming them? Are you giving them insights? But most, first and foremost, are you leaving them better than when you found them? And that's very subjective. Not always, it's, but it's, it's, you know, are you leaving them in a better place? Mm -hmm. Are you bettering mankind, for lack of a better way to put it, with these readings? Um, and I've seen a lot of people who do readings based on power trips, ego, they're very egocentric readings. And while it can be entertaining, I'm not sure how transformative it can be. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you don't I, have to, you don't have to believe these are anything other than tools that help you relay a message that, that, that connects your values. Cause that's really what they're buying connects your values with what they need. And not everybody well, will want your values. Yeah. Well, you know, this is something that I do want to at least give it a shot, try professionally. I, I'm spinning my wheels right now because my life is kind of up in the air and, and I don't want to, you know, try and get start, you know, don't want to start Why? advertising on Etsy or anything like Why? that. Why not? Well, just because... I'm worried about getting started and then having to stop to move because I'm going to be moving one of these days. <laughs> soon, okay. Soon wait, 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 Security wait, wait, Chad. A... I understand that. How long have you been here in the U S now? It's been uh, almost like eight months now. And I thought it'd be six at the most. I understand you were wrong. Those are eight months. You won't get back. And I've well, said, that I've, 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 I've at least been putting them to good use. I've been studying. I, it, and... Not a criticism. Yeah. What I've, and I've said this to some of you that are here, the biggest lie we tell ourselves as business people is that we have time. Just launch the damn thing. I've said this in BC. I'm just going to say it. I've said this to BC any number of times. Just launch the freaking thing. I'll work with you on it and we'll get it going. Just launch it. Um, and if you have to take a pause, you take a pause. If you have to take a break, you have to take a break. I've got people, I think I've done it actually a couple of times. Um, but I've got some people that I work with, they've got other outside demands and they just say, I'm not available during this time. Mm -hmm. If, if, if you love this and you're passionate about it, then don't wait because social security isn't going to change anything other than your income stream may be applied against it. And your location certainly has nothing to do with this, right. particularly now that we've got this ability. Then you don't even have to do it this way because you can do readings through email. You can do readings. Hell, I'm doing tarot scopes, right? You, you can do it that way. I don't even see these people. I don't, I mean, if they write me and tell me that they like it, I hear about it. Otherwise, it's just an email that goes out once a month. Do, okay, well, do hey, it. I feel I feel like I'm monopolizing the you're not. It's yeah. good for everybody because I think there are a lot of people not only on here, but who will listen to this, uh, who just need to launch, fly, spread your wings and fricking fly. And you can do a soft launch even. You don't have to do a massive launch and just do a soft launch and start building that email list. Yeah, I, and it's kind of an ego thing. I'm thinking that, you know, the minute I start this up, I'm going to be inundated and it's probably not going to be that way. It's going to 
come dribbling in and and that's that's probably better well, for well me. mr fortune teller you figure <laughs> it out but you know <laughs> it, I, I guess what i'm ultimately saying particularly in this kind of skill and art because it's as much an art as anything else that we do if you love it there's nothing that's going to take this away from you it's in your blood it, it's either in your blood or it isn't because if you're faking your way through it because it's interesting or because it's a quick get rich quick scheme or i'm not suggesting that is for you it will eventually be non-sustainable or a, the next shiny thing will come along and, and they'll move on when you look at the people irrespective of if they if they've got your reading style or not you know i watch bev for example this is bev's life she, I, I can i mean she just she lives this and i'm not going to get into finances i'm willing to bet she would do a lot of this stuff for free just because she loves doing it i know i do and that's what I'm looking for. Just get out there and do this stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Who's next? Yeah, BC. Um, I have a, a, a question about, like, I love your four re your reasons, uh, you know, what you, what, about them, what you bring to a reading yeah. and um, getting very comfortable with telling the story and, I, and you know, uh, insight and entertainment. And I'm, but I keep thinking about the predictive nature and how to sort of add more of that. And if, if I could, I, I want to tell you that the reason, one of the reasons I'm so interested in the tarot is when, and I love it so much, is when I was 18 years old, my sister and I had a reading at the psychic fair at my college. And the people that had been there before were all absolutely terrified of one woman. You know, everybody was offering free readings to the people that worked the fair, but this one woman wouldn't give free readings. And anybody that had a reading from her the year before was terrified. She had a card that said that she had a 98% accuracy rating. And my sister and I said, we're gonna go to this woman. I went to this woman, my sister and I are twins. Uh, my sister went, she told my sister she was pregnant. My sister said, there's an absolutely no way. Turns out she actually was pregnant. She told me that I was going to um, leave college and that I, uh, that something would happen, I would leave college. She also told me within 10 days, some, somebody would do something very nice for me and, and something terrible would happen to them. And, um, and all this was like, there, I'm like, there's no way, you know, within, within 10 days, you know, my grandfather brought me a truck, uh, totally out of the blue, that night he had a stroke. The, um, I ended up getting an opportunity that made me leave college. I would have never left college. It was inconceivable for me to leave college. Inconceivable. But the, conceivable. <laughs> but, I'm, but the interesting thing when you say about transformative too, at the end of my reading, she was telling me all this stuff. And I said, well, how, you know, 18 years old, I'm like, well, how will I know what to do? And she grabbed my hand and she said, uh, you will always make the right decision. You will always know what to do. And it's funny because my entire life, I've kind of carried that little thing through. Me. I want you to understand, by the way, all of you, how powerful what we do is. Listen to this. Yeah. And, and my sister's like, man, I'm pregnant. I had no idea. So, you know, I like the tarot is entertaining. I came to it by magic, but I've right. always sort of loved it and had this kind of this, this fascination with it, especially because of what happened to me was actually very transformative. Um, and um, it's funny, a year later, I saw that woman's card at another psychic fair. I was just like those people. I did not want to go near her, you know. Uh, well, it, it, and but, so, so, the, so the question is what? My question is, I would like to add a little bit of predictive sort of aspect to my readings. But I'm also why? very aware that what she... Why? Why? I think it's part of the entertainment. I think it's part of why people come and to have some, you know, mine tend to turn into more coaching. I'm very comfortable with somebody that wants to, is looking for a job and having all cups come up and telling them, you know, it's not about the job for you. The way you're going to get a job is relationships, you know, go to this or go to that. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. very comfortable weaving all that in, but there's still something about the, that kind of fortune telling aspect that is fascinating to people that if somebody wants that, what can you just give a couple 
um, examples of how you weave in a purely predictive aspect into like what you into a reading? Or might sure. No, 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 sure, sure. So how did that's a cherry on? Well, I'd like to be able to just put it as a cherry on top, actually, at the end. And, well, uh, and well, I think that's the I think for me, that's the obstacle you're facing. It's not the cherry on top. It's a reading. You're, you're making it an add on. And I'm suggesting to you, it's integrative. If I'm looking at you and I'm saying, you know, um, BC, you've got a lot of things that are going to be offered to you. Part of your challenge is figuring out what to say no to, because you're not really good at that at the moment. And what's, by the way, I'm looking at cards. Um, <laughs> here, I'll just show you what I did while you were talking. Okay, you're being offered, a, you know, let's, let's assume these cards came up, right? I'm looking at this and, and making this not only, it, it's a whole story to me. Lots of things are being offered to you. Some of them look better than others. The problem is you're not willing to go back to the beginning right now. You've been there, done that. You want new stuff. And I'm suggesting to you that the way for you to get better juggling and balancing your life, I'm looking at this, is to start over. Remember what it was like to be the apprentice. Remember what it was like when you were hungry to use Les Brown stuff. Let your ego take a step back. You're good at what you do. You've got a family, a stable family to support all this. Your biggest problem right now is saying no, not yes. And learning how not to, to have your attention drawn in so many different directions. That well, you start how, depleting. Okay, so now let's just start with that. Yeah. Very, very basic five minute reading, right? There was prediction in there. You've got a lot of stuff coming your way. I happen to see you taking a step back, not in your craftsmanship and skill, but in your taking a step back from your ego and saying, what am I going to do to actually get better balance in my life? And I don't know how else to, to explain it to you other than say, that's how I do a reading. I was waiting for the answer to that. But, but okay. well, and, and, <laughs> and there's a perfect example, by the way, of a five minute reading turning into now he wants more. Um, and so ask yourself, as I'm saying those things to you, what is it that I am saying that is intriguing you? I guess you're going to get a lot of things offered to you. I have a lot of things coming. That's in the future. So then, you know, that's 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 the beginning of the story. Uh, I, actually, it's not. That's the call to adventure. Mm -hmm. I I completely skipped by the uh, the ordinary world, I, and I'll you're going to love these cards. <laughs> you are. You're going to love these cards. Mm -hmm. New business opportunity new money flow. Oh, you can't uh -huh. see them here. But again, these are beginning cards. These are, these are your ability to start over with all the knowledge and all the experience that you have now that you didn't have then to go back to that beginner's mindset and now make more of it. And it results in more money and more business opportunities. Scott, what are those two cards? I can't clearly see them. Which one do you, which one do you, talking the, about it the, the last two the oh, very, these are the ace these are the aces what's the first one though i can't ace, ace of pentacles oh thank oh, you oh you know what's happening the color is picking up on my green screen and it's fading out that's why yeah okay cool yeah Thanks. ace it's ace of pentacles ace of wands all right yeah you know and then again for those of you that want details you look at the i, I happen to be using the writer weight for this you look at the actual cards and then there are details in this, you know, how many people actually look at the three of wands and see past the guy standing there on the cliff, this man of commerce, and actually look out and see the calm water and all the ships coming in, delivering things and taking things away. How many people actually look at, uh, you know, the, the seven of pentacles and look at where this guy is standing? How many times, and I invite all of you to do this, how many times do you adopt the body language of these folks so that you know what it feels like how many times by the way when your sitter is sitting with you 
do you adopt their body posture so you can take a feel for what they're feeling at that time? It's not about you. It's about them. Mm. It's always about them. Otherwise, you just read for yourself. And so, BC, I'm urging you, just like I did with Shad, take a little a more expansive approach to this and say, what if the predictive quality of this is actually the reading? Okay. Yeah. Because, because you know, if someone comes to you for a reading, if that's what you're putting yourself out there at, um, they're coming Ooh. to you for they're coming to you for prediction. Yeah, I get a I'll get a call. I love one of the last ones I did on a radio show. It's their dog was lost. Will they find them again? It's, it's yes or no. Right. And by the way, that was one of the calls where I said, how dare you call me and ask me that? I'll answer. I'm going to answer your question. The answer is yes, you will find your dog. But I want you to think about what led you to calling a complete stranger to ask that question. Now we know what the answer is, right? They were frantic. They were desperate. They weren't looking for entertainment. They were looking for comfort. And so when you do your predictive stuff, bear in mind, you're either giving them comfort or you're giving them solutions. It's usually not both. It's one or the other. Cool. But I, you, you know this stuff, right? And it's, you, you, you're a great storyteller. And so the idea is, uh, if, if I were you, for my, you know, you didn't ask, but I'll give you my two cents. I would take a moment here. Just watch this. This, this will be really fun for all of you, by the way. Can you see this, PC? Yeah. The lovers. Two of swords. King of swords. Just look at it for a minute. You got it? Yeah. Write me a piece of music for it in your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh. what, what is the musical theme of this reading? Oh, man. I don't need the notes. I want to know what the feel is. What's the tempo? What's the rhythm? That's going to cost you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your reading, but that's oh, okay. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. You don't have to answer it, yeah. right? I, I, what I'm saying is take what you guys know and bring it to the reading. Can you... Can you imagine now doing this reading and doing it in terms of a melody, of a theme, of pauses, of the reality that, you know, for any of us that play music, I, sure. I, I play music and I don't rush to get to the end. That's not the idea. The idea is not to play the music and get to the end. The idea is to enjoy playing the music. Yeah, sure. And especially when you phrase it like that. I certainly know that story. I can, that's my job. I can hear that story. You know? that's, and, so. and, I'm, and I'm asking you what a wonderful way to take what you have, have trained yourself to do and now make it part of your readings. And you don't even have to tell them that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It becomes the intuitive part. I'm very visual, right? I don't, sometimes I can come up with a, a musical theme. I instead come up with colors and numbers and, and I have, I'm a pattern guy. I'm really good at seeing patterns and connections and the oneness. I'm not telling people that I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Be a, so I, in other words, what I'm asking you to do, you want a really dead on accurate, fun reading. Think of yourself as a composer of the future. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I like matter of fact that you could even use a tagline. Help me, help me, com let me help you compose your future. Hmm. I kind of want to keep them separate, but uh, why? But certainly, because uh, you think I, you can hide? 
I just had this conversation with somebody and I'm going to tell you that, you know, that all I have to do is take a picture of you and Google images will do its face recognition and everybody will know who the hell you are and all your social media accounts. There's no hiding anymore. If you're going to be out there in the public, you cannot hide unless you're putting a mask on or a disguise, period. It's not going to happen. You will not be able to separate them. And I've told this story before. I got found, found out. I kept my real world separate from my woo-woo world. My entertainment people did not know I was a lawyer. My lawyer folks did not know I did any of this stuff. And it was uh, I was doing an event for Apple in San Francisco at one of their flagship stores. Biggest freaking store, uh, Apple store I'd ever seen at that time. And it was all about me, pictures of me everywhere hanging from the freaking things and out in front. And it's like, okay, I'm going to this thing. And 15 minutes before I go on, one of the, one of the heads of Apple walks up to me and says, are you the guy that reads tarot cards and does magic? And I went, shit. Because I did not think I could ever combine the two. And that if Apple figured this out, my time with them would be over. And exactly the opposite happened. I said, yes, I am. Why lie about it? When you're done here, can you do a show for us? Can we arrange for this and that? And it's like, things took off. So I know you want it to be separate, but it's not going to be that easy to hide. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to hide it, but but there's still, there's, but yeah, there's, that's all helpful. And yeah, I can, I can definitely do all that. I'm, I'm into anything that makes me a better reader and a better storyteller. Um, uh, uh, lastly, if you don't mind, uh, and quickly, I'll just want to say that when you were talking about in predictive, predictive, predictive and entertainment, I, I keep thinking also, I did a reading for a woman and it was, didn't want, necessarily want to have a reading, but she had one and all these terrible cards came up and she was in a terrible place in her life. And she talked about fear and everything. And I thought about the idea of carrying around like a few coins, a shilling, a something, some sort of something like that. So when somebody does get like a you know, a lot of heavy cards or somebody actually really truly seems like they're in some sort of, um, you know, uh, emotional state about, about of nervousness to be able to sort of give them something and say, you know, this is, you know, this is, a, you know, like that woman did for me when I was a kid, you know, she touched my hand. She said, you will always make the right decision. I've always thought about that. Yeah. Um, wonderful idea. I do certain things. I give people charms. Uh, mm -hmm. If if I really am touched, uh, periodically they'll wind up getting, you know, one of my bracelets with a charm on it that has a specific word for them, as well. I, so I do all those things. I, okay. I want you to, I want you to bear in mind, though, if that makes you a placebo. And I've said this before: placebo means I please you, a nocebo means I hurt you. And either be a witch doctor or don't commit to it, right? Most, most of modern medicine today, they are inadequate witch doctors. Witch doctors, the shamans, the natural healers, the intuitives, they all knew it was as much show and pre-framing and future pacing, but throw some gunfire into the, into the flames and let it explode and <gasps> the theatrics of it all. They also knew how powerful that was symbolically and at the subconscious level. And the one thing I'm gonna ask you, all of you to do, but you ask UBC to do, take your magic hat off. Wow, oh. okay. You're either P.T. Barnum or you're Edgar Casey. I don't know, you've seen my curiosity box. I think that there's a way to combine some of that stuff Edgar Casey was the sleeping prophet. John mm -hmm. Edward knows John Edward. If you've ever watched him live, I have. John is very theatrical. I'm not asking you to take the theatrics out of it. I'm asking you to stop thinking of yourself as the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain that says I'm a very, you know, what is what was it? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And they pull the curtain back and he says, uh, I'm a very good man, just a very bad wizard. Scott, yeah, that, that kind of brings up one of the points that I was asking about the uh, Scott Creasy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he's a, uh, I think, a really great 
mentalist. Number one, he's got he's got some uh, some great ideas as far as as question and answers, things like that. But he's also a, a tarot reader, and and he takes it seriously. I do both, by the way. I and and I'm going to cut this cut you short a little bit because I know where yep. you're going with it. I'll open with a haunted key. I'll open with a pendulum. Okay. I'll I'll open with an effect. I readily combine these. I, I don't make any bones about the fact that I do sleight of hand. I don't make any bones about the fact that, you know, I, I read minds. I clearly set that as I distinguish that I compartmentalize that self in the same show with reading. And, and all that, that's why I'm saying to you, BC, I'm not asking you to take off the magician hat entirely. But when you're doing readings, if this is where you want to go with it, you're not a magician at that point. Not sure, the magician yeah. you think you are. Yeah, yeah. No, sure. I agree. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah. And I do like the readings to be serious and transformative and people to feel, you know, I like to make, make a difference. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I've had, I've, I've been at dinners and lunches with, you know, pretty famous magicians. And of course, what happens when the waiter or waitress comes over? They all got to show the waiter or waitress their favorite magic trick, right? everybody's entertaining the, the, the wait staff um, and I'll do a reading instead. Who do you think they come back for at the end? You know, you told me about this and I got a quick, they don't care about any of that other stuff. And that's the power of what we do and, and the ability to literally transform lives. All right, Bev, Daryl, Kelly, go for it. Whoever's got one. We'll go a little bit longer if you guys want to. Scott, I just came here to be in the presence of greatness. And oh, I stop it. No, I'm serious. I love I love this. So thank you. I'm, I'm just here to learn today. Well, th thank you. I've learned a lot from you. By the way, if you guys do not know who Daryl is, go look him up, friend him on Facebook. Phenomenal thinker. Very, very deep, profound thinker as far as his skills uh, in a variety of different areas, including uh, some of his sound therapy work and and others so thank you scott bev what do you got um i okay i hope it will be brief um i have a repeat customer that i'd, I'd like to fire quite honestly i've done um, that yeah and, but i won't because uh, at least i don't think uh, her situation is um her she just gave birth to a kid and her husband while she when she had the baby um, basically told her that he was in love with another woman that he met at work and he wants to leave her. Um, and he's been telling her that for months now. Um, and she came to me originally shortly after he told her that. Um, and she wanted me to read for her a couple months after that. And I told her no, because uh, it wasn't enough time. I felt she, the first time I, my information showed me that she needed to take the time for herself and focus more on herself than on trying to make it work because he was pretty definitive in the fact that he wanted nothing to do with her anymore. Yeah. And she was convinced that, you know, he'd come back or she wanted her life back the way it was. And, um, and she's come to me again recently. And I, I read her again because it's been now um, about six months and the same cards showed me the same stuff, you know, that she was still hung up on how it used to be. And this is an intelligent woman. She's in the medical field, um, you know, and she, and I really, you know, and she's seeking therapy, uh, which is good. She's seeing a therapist, um, but she's not seeing what seems to be pretty obvious. Um, and to you. you know, yeah, and the, and the cards, you know, and, and then feedback I get from her is that her friends, her family, they're all telling her the same thing I am, you know, and, uh, and she just really believes it's a phase. So here I'm in this situation now. Um, I expect I'll hear from her again. Um, and I don't know what to do. Uh, maybe I should fire her. I don't know. What should I do? What do you do? <laughs> do you want comfort or solutions? Well, I think she's looking for comfort. And no, I'm do offering, you do me? Bev, do you Bev? I want, want a solution. I don't want comfort. Right. <laughs> I don't need comfort. <laughs> are, are, are you charging her? Yes, she's Why? paying. Why? Because I really feel uh, that um, 
it, it's fair to do that. I mean, I don't think it'd be any different if it were free. I'd be even worse as far as I'm All concerned. Right. So, so he, he, you've heard me talk about the drama triangle before. Yeah. And here, here's the reality. You're part of the drama right now. And okay. whenever I feel that I'm part of the drama, and I'll explain it in a minute, okay. I remove myself from the reading. Okay. That, so that's number one. If, if I am the villain, a predator, the victim, the, the martyr, or I'm the hero, the white knight who's going to sweep in and save him or her, I'm part of the drama of it all. And okay. I don't view myself as that. I'm listening to you mm -hmm. and you want to help her. No, at this point, I don't think I can. I, I never thought I could. I believe that the only person that can help her is herself. Okay. So in that, right. So let me take a step back then and reset. And that is if what you're, what I'm hearing you say is you can't be Yoda to her Luke Skywalker anymore. I don't watch Star Wars. I don't know what that means. You can't be the, so we we'll use the archetypes. You can't be a, you can't be the guide for the hero in the story. She's the hero. You can't be the hero because she's not listening to you. I'm sorry, you okay. can't be the guide because she's not listening. Yes, I agree with that. So. And so what I, I have literally told, I have have fired people for two reasons. One, they're addicted to the readings. And I've wow. said, I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, on some occasions, I will say, it, you can come once a month. Alternatively, it's, I, I am not the right person for you at this point. You need a marriage counselor, or you need a therapist, oh, or you I need like a grief that. counselor. Yeah. Um, and if you know somebody, you can help them with. That's fine. But I'm not. I'm not that person right now. Okay. And after you go and get some help, I'll be here for you. Okay. So yeah, maybe letting her go is the right thing, and I do like that. Uh, yeah. And I and I've done it. It's you know there are some people that. You know, I, I've always believed that much of what we do in readings is confirm what people already know they should be doing anyway. Yeah. And that's not even happening here. You're not helping, you're not leaving them in a better place than when you found them. They're stagnant. Yeah. This, this lady's stagnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, cool. I like that. Sure. Thank you. Kelly, anything? I am kind of like Daryl. I was here to be in your presence and learn. And uh, I'm taking this intuitive intensive class right now and kind of just working on my skills and cool learning. So well, well welcome. I guess Thank you. maybe sometime, you know, maybe I'll be ready to take your class and be put on the spot. <laughs> on the spot. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's definitely the worth it. it. It's a it's a good class. Thank you. Awesome. So I, even yeah. though I feel like I, I'm coming off as, as a, a very uh, flaky kind of guy right now, I got a lot out of the class. Um, I, I, you're not coming across that way. Well, that's uh, good. Maybe uh, unconfident is what I should have right. said. Shad, you get one more question. I don't remember all the things you wrote. Oh, how was um, Batman? Wait, wait. How was the Batman movie? I liked it. It's it's not a superhero movie. It's a detective story. Well, it's the start. Yeah. All right. But it's it's great. I, I thought it was I thought it was very not my favorite, but it's a good one. Um, I'm going to actually answer two quick two of your questions real quickly because I think it will help. Um, you talked about using a pendulum to deal with yes or no questions. I don't. Uh, I actually do one, if not two cards. Mm -hmm. And the cards are either positive or negative for me. I do not read reversals. So up and down is completely irrelevant. It's the cards themselves. And that's how I do my yes or no's. Uh, number two, you asked about personal oracles. Um, I will show you literally what I bring to a reading. All right. So I feel like I'm going, I feel like it's a doctor's bag, right? <laughs> this actually isn't, it's a, it's a leather ammo kit. 
this thing is filled with different oracles. I've got stones in here. I've got cards in here. I've got RPG dice. This goes with me to every reading. I Ching is in here, by the way, because you mentioned that. Um, platonic solids are in here. Obviously, within that, the Vitruvian square goes, oracle cards, and a couple of different tarot decks. I take all of it. And that's because uh, period, oh, and a pendulum. And that is because periodically, I, I, you just get a feel for this is what we need to use for this reading. And it's much like that old saying, if all you have is a hammer, pretty soon everything starts looking like a nail. So you use the I Ching for oh, yeah. readings? Yeah, I've got both the sticks and I've got I Ching coins. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got both of those. And it's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, much of the time, again, I'm doing what I call streaming tarot. It's, you know, things are just going through my head because it's the way I, I, I think and process. I don't know what it works out for like you. Um, you know, it's, it, that's why I'm able to do the tarot scopes that I do, by the way. It's, that's all stream of consciousness combined with cards and numerology and astrology. And it's just all jumbled together till it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I look at your question here and you know, if you like the I Ching and you've got your you've got your coins, your tokens that you use, just use them. Yeah, I use them for myself, and it it really it speaks to me. Maybe the strongest of all the oracles that I've I've used. That's all that matters. I'm just not sure. It, it's so. I mean, it's it's. I say it's simple. It's not simple, but it, I think that you know, it's it's a personal thing. That why should I take money for? My God, man, it's Doing nine, it it's nine else. squares. Come on. <laughs> How much more simple can it get? It's nine <laughs> squares. And yet it's the most powerful stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you've got one added benefit, by the way. Number one, your time overseas. The fact that you know the culture and more importantly, the fact that it speaks to you. Mm -hmm. You can tell that as part of your um, backstory when you're working with people. This is why I know this stuff. This isn't just a gimmick. This is what speaks to me and, and then do the reading and let it speak through you. Let it tell the story. That's good to think about. Like I say, it's something I've been jump, juggling for a while and, and it's good to hear you know that perspective. So you're a rule follower. Uh, you I, are. I hate to think I hate to think I am, but I think but I am. You are. What what if you weren't? What would be different then? You know, it's funny. I, I, I think when it comes to readings, I am a rule follower. Because I think it can it can it can affect so many people in so many strong ways. And I think I take refuge in the rules, maybe. In other parts of my life, I'm you know I, I don't follow the rules. I'm no no I'm, no. I, I was talking about divination, and yeah. the, and the reality is, I want to let you all in on a little secret. May I? Please. If you don't follow the rules, you're not going to break anything, and the world will not shift on its axis. Mm. And you might just enjoy it, because if you're doing divination and you're following rules, you're doing somebody else's reading. Mm -hmm. and there are plenty of people out there that will tell you you can't do that you shouldn't do that that's not what that card i've read cards and people it's not what that card is but it felt right at the time the card was nothing but a gateway to something else mm -hmm. lose the rules if you never read another little white book i'd be more than happy well i, you, I have tossed them so that that's my baby step i, I don't use the white books but you understand what I'm saying. If you'll feel the cards, this is why I tell people, whether it's my deck of shadows or it's the tarot, whatever, take your I Ching. Have you ever slept with it? 
I have not slept with that one. I, I, I have with some of my cards. No, I'm really serious. You guys take your device, your tool, and sleep with it, much like you would sleep with a lover, and get to know it. Mm -hmm. It'll all be subconscious. Stick it under your pillow. The tooth fairy will not steal it. And it, it, it like will key into you. Um, and, and I will tell you, again, it goes beyond the scope of this. And, and we'll end our discussion today with this. Um, you know, for any of you who have ever studied Kabbalah, uh, one of the first things where I got formal training uh, with people, and it was to formally not follow the rules, but it was formal training and I was doing path work. You want to get down and dirty and get to know these cards. And that's to literally go on journeys with each and every one of them individually and listen to what they say to you and be there with them in the adventure. And um, then you write in your journal about it. That's how deeply you can go with all of this, that they become friends of yours. It's not a prop. These are friends. And then it becomes an it, then, then you've integrated it into you. And it has nothing whatsoever, by the way, to do with whether you believe or not believe in fortune telling. Completely irrelevant. What it does is it serves as a symbolic, mythic way for you to talk human to human because you already know this stuff. If you threw out your palm reading and your your tea reading and your tarot cards and your pendulums, you threw all that out, I can guarantee I could turn you into a phenomenal reader because you know this stuff. Right now, this is just a way, I mean, I use these as tool, as props. People like to see them. It gives them comfort in doing it. But Bev, you, I, I think you'll agree with me. Most of the time, we're not reading this stuff anyway. It's a jumping off point. And yeah, we get writer's block sometimes. I'll just be, okay, the, the cards help you get through that. So hopefully this has helped today. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, there will be more. Um, and yes, Chef? No, I was just saying oh, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah. All right. Thank be you. Well. Lovely to see the rest of you. It was great to see you all. Good yeah. to see you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wait, Scott, we need, we need a retreat with us all, please. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> Don't, don't think I don't want that now that I have learned that the Batman was filmed in London, among other oh. places. So don't think for a minute I'm not thinking about it. And you and I have some other things to chat about as well. So uh, <laughs> we, we will talk more. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Be well. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.